real bummer today. This bracelet that I got at the very top of Mount Vesuvius at pretty much, well, I think it was like March last year. It broke. I woke up and it was, uh, it had snapped apart in bed. Bummer. Hope that's not bad luck. Look in that mess. All you can see is a nose. Well, a little bit more now. Good morning, sunshine. What's up there, fella? I'm taking you with me. Well, John and I just went outside and the plan was going to be to take him to the dog park over by where I'm going to be vlogging today. And then he could just hang out in the car um, while I'm doing the vlog because I'll have my eye right there on him. But we just walked outside and it looks like it rained all night. So I had bought Jaw some, well, they look like balloons, but they go over a dog's feet. It was for Ohio, but he ended up not needing them there. Um, so I think I'm going to try them now and see if he'll walk around in them. I'll see what happens here, guys. <laughs> I am, I'm not confident in this because he doesn't generally like anything out of the ordinary or unusual for him. So, And who knows, they may even be too big. I don't know. I got the size small, but who knows. Let's give him a try. He's just not having it. It's just not going to work this time. Well, I guess we'll take him for a walk before I go vlog. All right, Jaw's been walked. Let's go vlogging. This should feel a little bit like deja vu because we were just here not too long ago. Yep, we're back over here at Valhalla Cemetery. Now the grave we're looking for today isn't actually here in the Avenue of Heroes, though it probably should be, because when I tell you how influential this man was, I think you'd be pretty shocked. Now I've been a wrestling fan my entire life, and I'm kind of shocked to find out that who we're looking for today, someone I really have never heard that much about. And yet, me being a wrestling fan most all of my life, um, <laughs> most of the people that I became a fan of wrestling because of stole this man's gimmicks as part of their own, and I just never knew it. And this is such a great war memorial, I just wanted to put it on before we started looking for the grave of Gorgeous George. Now, Gorgeous George is a man who they credit as, in the 1950s, selling more televisions than Milton Berle. And like I left you with yesterday on the cliffhanger, all three men, Bob Dylan, James Brown and Muhammad Ali all said that once they saw Gorgeous George, that was a life-changing moment, and they took that with them in everything they did. And I think when I tell you about Gorgeous George, you will see it in all three. Now, Gorgeous George was actually born George Wagner, and his story and how he became a wrestler is pretty fascinating because his father was a house painter that couldn't find much work, and his mother was um, confined to a bed. She had paralysis. And by the age of 14, both of them would pass away. And a family that he was friends with, he was friends with their kids, they were the same age, the James family took him in and uh, raised them as one of his own, or one of their own. And once George um, got to be about 16, 17, he and the James brothers all decided to become wrestlers. Now, George was a great wrestler physically. Um, they said he could move around the ring like no one else, but he just didn't have anything that was selling tickets until he came up with the gimmick of Gorgeous George. In the late 30s, George was traveling around, met a woman and fell in love. And during that time, he saw a wrestler who had a valet and he got this idea, he said, I think I can do this, but I can do it even bigger. So he went, he dyed his hair, he bleached it, bright blonde, and Gorgeous George was born. He's the reason we would have what were called Georgie pins. And where this all came from was he realized that if you looked good and had a big mouth, people would wanna pay to see someone shut your mouth. 
So that's basically what he did. If you are a fan of Ric Flair, you owe it to Gorgeous George. Ric Flair basically took a lot of that. Uh, Gorgeous George was uh, blonde hair, curled hair, long hair. He would wear these lavish robes and he didn't even have the name Gorgeous George until one day he was uh, wrestling a match up in Portland where his wife's family was from and some women out in the crowd yelled, you're gorgeous, George, you're gorgeous. And he just, that stuck with him, so he went with that. And right away he asked his wife's mother to start sewing him lavish uh, robes and gowns. And so he would start coming to the ring um, <laughs> with a valet named Jeffries, and Jeffries would uh, come in with a whisk broom and whisk all the uh, debris out of the way. He would scatter rose petals at the ground where George was gonna walk, and he would come in with um, what I knew from Rick the Model Martell as the Arrogance bottle, he would have his valet walk in with one of those. Um, it was They were basically used mainly for nurseries, which is basically used to spread pesticides, and he would um, have his valet come in and spray Chanel number no. 10. Now, <laughs> you, you might say you've never heard of Chanel number no. 10 or Chanel number no. 5. Well, he said, why, why be only half safe? Because he had a paranoia his entire wrestling career, but they said it was birthed really early on um, where he would um, get blood blisters from wrestling on the mats. Um, things like staph infection were pretty common for wrestlers um, rolling around on those mats. So he um, would go out and sterilize the ring. He would spray you know basically a human sterilizer onto the mat and so that's where this idea came from so from the early 40s until about 1952 this was his gimmick and he would walk into the ring and the the referee um would get sprayed as well by that disinfectant and when the referee would be checking George for like weapons or whatever George would always yell get your filthy hands off me but they said the moment that the bell rang the match would only last like less than a minute and either George would win or George would lose, but they said it was more all about the ring entrance and just drumming up all this hate and they said he would come into pomp and circumstance, which is what Randy the Macho Man Savage would eventually come in with. Now in the early 50s they realized that wrestling was a pretty cheap form of entertainment that they could put on television and most households then really only got the Milton Berle show and professional wrestling and Gorgeous George was the main draw in all of this. He'd become so popular in fact that he would switch to a female valet named Cherry Dupree and um, she was basically a dancer that he met in Vegas and thought she had a great look but he also kind of had an interest in her so um, his marriage ended in 52 and he took her on as his new valet and she would basically do the same things as Jeffrey. She would come in and she would spray down the ring and she would fold up his robe and she would put out a mink um, little like piece of carpet right on the ring so that when he walked in he could walk onto that and then they would put his robe onto that and I mean they just had this whole crazy presentation and he would have these gold pins in his hair and she would pull those out and those were called Georgie pins and she would throw those out in the crowd for the female fans and like I said because um, Milton Berle and Gorgeous George were so popular in those days, they credited Gorgeous George as being um, more than half of the reason people owned televisions in their home. And um, more people knew who Gorgeous George was in those days than even Milton Berle. Now they said that he became really great friends with Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, and Bob Hope loved him so much that he did actually two things. They said one thing is he would bring him to the studio and walk him around and introduce him to people, which ended up getting him into a movie, but they said he would also take him into the wardrobe department and tell the women in the wardrobe department to make him whatever kind of robes he wanted. And then Bob Hope, um, using like gowns and robes and things like that for his skits, he would also give those to Gorgeous George to fix up and do with whatever. So he had a pretty long career. He actually wrestled for almost 20 years and unfortunately towards the end he just you know the more people were doing it you, like we would know throughout history now you have Ric Flair you have superstar Billy Graham you have Hulk Hogan all these guys that bleach their hair and have this persona of coming in and feathered boas and things like that but it it all started with Gorgeous George and when he uh, basically his health just got so bad 
that um, he had been a drinker his whole life and Cherry Dupree even said his biggest problem was he couldn't say no. If somebody, if he went into a club, everybody knew him, everybody loved him, and they all wanted to buy him a drink, which is the same story that you hear Ric Flair tell. Um, but they said that his drinking just got so out of hand that the doctor finally said, if you don't follow this strict diet that I'm putting you on now, you'll be dead in two weeks. So they put him on this strict diet, no drinking, no carbonated water, no, you know, really, really strict, bland diet. And they said he stuck to it for about nine months and then he just finally said, I don't wanna live like this anymore. If, uh, if I have to live like this, it's not worth living. But he did own a bar in Van Nuys that was called uh, Gorgeous George's Ringside Diner. And as you can see on here, he and Cherry Dupree had a son together named Don, and you can see love to our daddy. Now, when he passed away, they said that thousands of fans came out for the funeral, and thousands of mourners lined this entire walkway out here to pay homage to the most popular wrestler of the day. And online, what I read was that they said that um, the man who played the genius, Lanny Poffo, said that his father paid for the funeral. Angelo Poffo, who was also Randy Macho Man Savage's dad. But in an interview, Cherry Dupree said, I'm tired of people saying that. That's not what happened. She said, the funeral cost $10,000. Every celebrity in town was there, everyone you could think of. It was a real showing and everything, but she said nobody um, other than the wrestling association, um, the business partners of the main people that he was wrestling for chipped in anything. She said she got 2000 from them and she said I spent the next eight years of my life working multiple jobs to pay off the funeral. But she said I loved him and, and he deserved it. Now, like I said, he's widely not talked about, which is kind of surprising because he is a member of the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame as well as the WWE Hall of Fame. And without him, we would have never had that, the Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, this, this guy that people love to hate. This guy that you can even see in footage online when you uh, watch him enter the ring. People are throwing things at him, they're taking swings at him, and that was just all part of it. He said that was part of the appeal. So here lies one of the biggest television draws of all time that most of us have probably never, ever heard of. He was a multiple time champion. He was known as a dandy. And he was one of the most popular wrestlers of all time. Gorgeous George. Now he was known his entire career as the human orchid. And in many cases when you would go to wherever he lived, there were orchids everywhere. There were paintings of orchids. And when he was buried, he was buried in a robe with a cape made of orchids or in the theme of orchids. Gorgeous George would go on to have um, famous feuds in the AWA with the James brothers that he grew up and was raised with and in the end he did even job to people. He would lose matches. He wasn't one of those guys that refused to and in fact they said towards the end of his career, when he knew it was the end of his career, he would, um, to draw more money, he would um, offer up in the match that if he was beaten, he would let them cut his hair or shave his head. And, uh, and he did follow through with that. When he would lose those matches, they would cut his hair right there in the ring. Much like Brutus the Barber Beefcake. See how many different wrestlers stole from this guy? Now, like I said, I was not a fan of this guy because I didn't even know his history or anything about him until recently. But when I read about him and I read how many people had been heavily influenced by him, I mean, just to name Muhammad Ali, you can see with a guy this boisterous and loud and everything where Muhammad Ali would get that same exact personality. But I saw, you know, just how influential this guy was and I said, that's really the whole point of doing these vlogs is to turn people on to people they'd never even heard of. Now sadly it's said that though George grossed tons of money in his life, he really died kind of a poor pauper. Like I said, his wife had to work for eight years to pay off the funeral and um, 
in the end he was living in an apartment in Hollywood working as a bartender in Glendale and his wife was a waitress there as well. Just to let you know the kind of guy George was before he was even gorgeous George when he first met and married Betty his first wife he did so in the ring and saw that it got such a great response and great reaction that it became a gimmick and he did it all across the country at multiple arenas. I guess he was just destined to be larger than life. I wonder what happened to all of gorgeous George's robes and all that stuff. Very curious now. Cheated from the time the bell rang till the time the match was over. Now let's head out of here. Here's an interesting mural for the North Hollywood Arts District. Little community mural here. The painter down here. Can't forget these guys. Let's wander into the 99 cent store. There's always some sort of craziness that ensues in here. Plus, I just like coming here. Oh, get yourself ready. Valentine's Day is coming up. Don't forget. Don't those look like Paddington Bear hats? It does to me. Yeah, right. You think I need that sign? I got a few things. And speaking of Gorgeous George, another thing he used to do is have his valet, Jeffries or Cherry Dupree, both bring a mirror down so he could look at himself before he wrestled. And of course, what inspired today's vlog was me doing the vlog on the Hollywood Legion Stadium the other day and they mentioned George. Look what I brought you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, good evening, my friends. We're going to call it a night. I, uh, I wanted to thank Debbie Mandares and Francine Long Scott for making contributions to my channel. And uh, John and I went and watched the final championship game um, college football tonight. And I said before the game, uh, we were watching with my friend Kevin, I said, I just have a weird feeling that Clemson, something's going to happen, Clemson's going to win, and they just tore it up. So, really good game. I hope you got to watch it if you like um, football. It was a really great game. Come back and see me tomorrow. Breck is coming up, and uh, we're doing something that is more in Breck's wheelhouse than mine, but it's something we both wanted to see for a while, and we haven't, so you guys will go along with us. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Once again, I said